So welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just wanted to explain a couple of things before I set this video off. Uh, I wanna, well, actually, I want to give a big thank you to Gary, particularly at uh, Via Moto, a Prilly dealership in Sheffield. I've bought my RSV4 and my old Kawasaki ZX6 from Via Moto, uh, and they've been brilliant. I've had a couple of issues with my RSV, my own doing, actually, nothing to do with the bike or the service there. And Gary, in particular, has been absolutely phenomenal looking after me. Even though I've been a bit difficult with him at times uh, and sort of blamed him for a few things and was a bit awkward. Um, but he's been excellent with me. And I just want to make it clear that Gary had offered to actually lend me this bike for 24 hours and, and go and film and do what I want with it. It was really cool about it. But just the way that I like to do these um, road to new superbike and road to whatever videos is I like to literally just ride them as I would do on a normal test ride. And give you my opinion as if I'm a normal person doing a test ride. Um... So it's not for the want of an offer from Viamoto at Sheffield why I didn't spend a lot of time on the bike. This is just the way that I like to do these things. It's just a straight off the cuff, off the top of my head. This is genuinely what I feel about the bike the first time I ride it. Um, the bike... The bike's awesome, whatever your personal preference is, 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 is up to you. But more importantly, the dealership at Sheffield and Gary have been absolutely phenomenal. And I think it's all too easy sometimes for us to whinge and moan about dealerships, but actually credit where credit's due to those guys. He's been absolutely fantastic. So I just wanted to say thanks to Gary if you're watching. Thanks for the offer of loaning me the bike. And if I um, uh, decide to make further videos on the Tuono, I'll definitely take you up on that. Um, but for this particular series, it's literally just ride it out, quick test ride, that's what I think. That's how I do these videos. So just to set the scene for the video. So thanks very much for watching and uh, let's crack on. So welcome back to the channel. We've got another episode of the Super Naked for the Road today. Um, hopefully you saw my uh, ZH2 video, but if you didn't, you know the drill. Um, I'm really seriously considering buying a Super Naked just for the road. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out if it's the right thing to do. Um, my RSV4 1100 factory is going nowhere, um, but that's predominantly going to be used on track. Um, so I'm considering something a bit more road friendly. So today um, I have got its uh, slightly less good looking sibling. So here is the um, 2020 uh, Tuono 1100 factory. So, welcome to the uh, Tuono, 2020 Tuono 1100 factory, uh, and this is uh, episode two, I think, of my Super Naked for the Road series. Um, as I think I probably said uh, previously and in the intro, I'm really thinking about considering buying a Super Naked just for road riding, uh, and this is one of the contenders. Yeah, so, okay, so how does this feel? So again it's um, you know as is the point of a super naked it's nice and upright um, feels proper comfortable it doesn't feel as comfortable as the ZH2 it's very different actually to that bike the ZH2 was super smooth you know super super upright big fat comfy plush seat this is much much closer to the RSV4 
um, not in riding position obviously you sat upright flat bars etc and it is comfortable from that point of view um, but it's pretty close in feeling to the RSV4 uh, it feels less like a comfy super naked than the ZH2 does but it feels a lot more exciting uh, so it's the same 1100cc engine as what's in the RSV4 um, I again this is not a review so I have no idea but it feels like I don't think it's tuned in the same way it doesn't feel quite as high geared and it feels a little bit slower um, but still bonkers like literally bonkers this one is uh, um, I only done, I don't know, it's like 700 miles, but this one's had the race map on. It's got the Akropovich, the dealer fits the Akropovich can, and the Aprilia racing map, which you can see by the completely, utterly useless, but equally satisfying Aprilia racing logo that comes up on the dash when you have the map done. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So, um, what can I say about it? Yeah, it, it's exciting, uh, it feels super comfortable. Um, Trying to, I'm trying to put this into words. It, it, it's, uh, it's kind of a bit of a mixture. This bike, it, it, I, it, it almost feels a bit contradictory. That it's, um, it, it feels too good and too fast and focused for what it's supposed to do. I mean, Christ. The, uh, the ZH2 was really, really fast, but it was sort of like super smooth and slick and, you know, you, you could just cruise along and waft along uh, on that bike and do big miles. This one feels like more angry, like, like uh, it's got the can on it as well. And it feels a bit more rough and sort of V4-ish, uh, like the Aprilia. Uh, into corners, it's... Yeah, I mean, that feels nice, a little bit wallowy, but I have got it in the softer suspension uh, mode at the moment. But it's pretty nice. Um, feels like a, a quality bike. I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's a very good looking bike. It's not uh, pretty, shall we say. You know, the, the, the RSV4, I think, it depends on who you talk to, but it looks pretty mean. Let's give this, give this a few bends and see... Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's a nutter. It's definitely a nutter. Same Brembo braking system, which are amazing. Um, but it handles lovely, really nice. It's just, I'm just uh, not sure how to describe it, really. And it, I, it's not so much my inability to articulate things, although that is pretty shit. It's just, uh, it, it does sit. It sits in a weird little places. It doesn't feel like uh, I, I don't know. I think really that, that ZH2 is probably the problem. I think that was just too comfortable and too sort of uh, um, too soft and plush uh, compared to this. I and mean, you look at what this competes against. For me, I mean, I, to be honest with you, my gut instinct when I thought about this, my favourite was the KTM or maybe the Street Fighter. But again, Ducati just seems to take the piss a bit with how much their bikes cost you know you're paying for that Ducati badge a bit which uh, maybe if I was to buy a Ducati uh, it would be the Street Fighter though not the V4S I think you can you can just about justify that because you know I wouldn't abuse this uh, type of bike as much as I do my bikes that I'm going to use on track which will, to be fair will probably end up being a track only bike eventually next year uh, I really like this, it, it just feels like noise and you know, this has got the Acro can on it, like I said, this, this has got the can with the baffle in, somebody for some reason has decided to put the baffle in the Akropovich can, God knows why, um, but it feels, uh, yeah, very V4-y, very similar, it sounds absolutely amazing, there's no better sound in the world, in my opinion, uh, I think it beats the Ducati, it beats the R1, this Aprilia V4 is just the absolute best. Um, I, I, I can't, I can't say how much uh, I love this engine and the noise it makes. It's phenomenal. All right, so let's take this down these uh, slightly damp twisties. Be careful, this ain't my bike. My bike is currently in the dealership, uh, having something fitted to it that will be making appearance on a video very soon. <laughs> let's leave it at that. Something very cool is coming this way. So these bumpy roads, you know, the suspension feels pretty firm still. Um, yep, 
just trying to watch. There's lots of damp patches here, so I need to be really careful. Yeah, the, it's got nice holdings on it. You can tell the suspension is good, but it, it's certainly set up firm. Um, but again, you know, I guess that's what you want, isn't it, for a, a sort of fun road bike. I mean, we're, not, we're not buying a cruiser here, we're buying something to have fun down the twisties, that's kind of the point of it, so I think the H2 was a, a too soft, too smooth, um, that supercharger was a giggle, but it was a novelty, to be honest, it'd get really annoying after a while, keep <coughs> chirping like, you're like a dolphin, alien, slash, god knows, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I don't know if you can tell in my voice, I'm a bit, I like this, it's good, it's a laugh, but where's my RSV4 1100 factory feels special and I look at it and I'm like oh I'm in love with it and it's just beautiful and makes me feel special this does not do that being honest with you uh, and I, I don't know whether it's the looks of it or It's certainly fast enough. I mean, it's that V4 1100 engine, it's rapid. Yeah, sorry, I find it hard to talk and go around corners at the same time. Um, it's just, it's not, it's not giving me a boner, for want of a better expression. Um, I don't look at it and think, wow, and that's a big part of buying a bike for me. You know, I'm not buying a bike to get me to work. I'm not buying a, a bike to do a job. I'm buying a bike. It's an emotional purchase for me, this, not a, uh, a practical one. So the one of the main things about me buying any bike has got to be, it's got to make me smile and I've got to love it. I, I, just, I just don't really love this. I, I don't like this front end bit here. Just It feels a bit like... Um, well, I'm going to piss a lot of Apilio owners off here, I'm aware of that, but the front end just feels like a bit of an afterthought. The wallow would be in that corner. It's weird because it feels stiff over bumps, but then you go around a corner like that and it sort of squats down on the back shock. Maybe I've got the suspension in the wrong mode, but it's in active mode, so it should be figuring this out. Um, yeah, so I think in summary, you know, just is just a really quick, uh, as all my videos are, this is not a review, it's just my initial first impressions riding this bike, they've lent me for a couple of hours, very kindly, um, shout out to Viamoto, uh, Aprilia and Honda dealership in Sheffield, uh, I'll link them in the channel, they've been really good with me actually, um, uh, yeah, I had a couple of issues with my RSV4, all my fault by the way, nothing like mechanical or anything like that, I did a, I, I'll make a video on this later, but I, I, I made a major fuck up when I was washing it um, and used the wrong stuff and got some marks on it, but they were really good with me actually, uh, helped me out loads, so thanks to them, thanks for lending me this, um, but yeah, I just, although it's nice, and uh, look, if you want to buy this bike, you're buying an amazing bike, you could do big miles real quick on this bike. I was a traction control flashing at me there. Right, I don't really just crack the throttle for Christ's sake. That's how crazy it is. I've got a traction control on eight full, basically, because it's, I don't know if you can see, but I've just started to get uh, rain spots on my visor and the roads are damp. So trust me, you need it. But I've, I've seen the traction control kick in a couple of times, um, which is good, I suppose. Um, so yeah, look, summary, great bike, really fast, feels like, a bit like the V4. Um, all right, sorry, the RSV4 uh, is comfortable. The suspension is, uh, I don't know, but firm and wallow at the same time. But this is just a little rolling, so you can play about with that. Um, brakes are good. Uh, it's just not for me. It doesn't float my boat. And it's that simple, really. <laughs> that's, that This 10, 12 minute video, how long it is, that's how uh, my brain works. Generally, like the RSV, I knew I was going to buy it within, I don't know, first set of twisties I went down on that original video, that, that did it, I knew I was going to buy it then, in a few minutes, um, but the same with this, I know I'm not going to buy this now, just to be clear, I think from the two that I've ridden so far, the Ninja and this, neither of them would I buy, um, personal preference, look, nothing against anybody who has bought them, both amazing bikes, very competent, um, but for me that's narrowed it down to two now, so it's either the Ducati Street Fighter or the Super Duke the KTM Super Duke 1290. 
so I'm going to get some rides on them at some point when I get time uh, and then we'll, we'll see how we get on but yeah look quick video uh, quick first impressions thank you very much for watching creeping up on 500 subscribers now which is amazingly mental but uh, you must be really bored in lockdown but I thank you all very much and I'll uh, catch you on the next one I'm seeing shimmers in this unresting dream